Hey friends, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video with me, Jess Gatleo. I'm so glad to have you here and thank you again as always for choosing me over and over again. Now it's been a while since we did this video. Uh, before we get started, please do subscribe to the channel and um, click the bell, click the notification bell, do all the things for the things for the things that makes for the things to happen. Thank you so much for being here. Like I said, we haven't done this video in quite a while and this is the advice with cat segment and because you you kind of want to have you know major breaks between the advice with cat segments you can't do them all the time because you want people to just just kind of live their lives you know have a good time can't always be up in people business except if you're doing it with candid with cat but you can't be you know all up in people's business so for advice with cat i wanted us to be here have a chat while I drink my greens for the day, which I typically do all the time. And I'm going to be answering some of your questions. Hopefully I can answer them. Again, disclaimer, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a trained psychologist. I'm not a Navi. I'm just a life coach in training. And I love to give advice here and there. So this is pretty much like giving advice to a friend from a friend, not a qualified physician. Cool? Mm. Cool. The first one says, how to deal with failure after you've really put in the work and it's something that you love effortlessly. I think when you understand, when you start understanding that failure is a part of life, we fail with a lot of things. Um, yes, failure is not nice. Yes, failure is not what we want, especially when we enter into something. You want to enter into being a content creator. You don't enter into it hoping to fail. You want to enter into a marriage or a relationship. You don't enter into it hoping that it will fail. So it's one of those things that we go into something, anything, whether it may be a new job, a new career and all of that, hoping that we do not fail and hoping that it becomes a success, a resounding success for that matter. But failure is, unfortunately, a part and parcel of life. And I feel like if you enter into a situation knowing that you are who you are, you're going to own your truth and own what is happening in, this, in the moment. No, I don't know what this particular situation is. I don't know whether it's a relationship. I don't, I don't know whether it's a job that didn't quite work out or um, an entrepreneurship you know, a uh, moment that didn't quite work out and things like that, sun in and out of the clouds. I say this all the time, but I don't know what it is in particular, so I can't give a detailed response. All I can say is that failure is not the end. And the, 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 the reality of that is you can't give up because you failed. I feel like failing, failing is a teachable moment. Failing is a teachable moment that teaches you what not to do the next time around. So whether it be with a relationship, with, with a job, with a, uh, a, a new business venture, whether it may be, whatever it may be, a friendship, sometimes choosing to notice the things that you did wrong is what becomes helpful in changing the narrative when you start again with something else or with a new venture or with, a, with your other friendships or things like that. So you have to see failure as a teachable moment as opposed to seeing it as, wow, that's it, I'm done, I can't do it, I failed, blah, 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 that's it, it's over. Um, that's um, long distance relationships. It's serious, but you guys are still young and starting out in your careers. Uh, personally, for me, I personally, personally, for me, I don't necessarily believe in long distance relationships. However, it seems to have worked for many relationships, many couples over the years. Some parents have long distance relationships, you know, where the one parent is in the UK and the other parent is in South Africa and it works. And, 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 you know, that's, that's fine. I feel like if it's working and it's currently working and you found a way to navigate being that far apart from one another but still keep the flame and the fire burning, then what is the problem? You have to just keep at it. I feel like it's just a lot harder and there's a lot more demanding things that you need to look into when it comes to being in a long distance relationship. However, 
it's not impossible to execute because clearly you are already executing it you are wow i swear when i wear makeup my face my face my phone face nothing recognize me um it's serious but you guys are still young and starting out in your careers and you're still young and starting out in your careers that's not any indication that because you're still young it might not work out because you're starting in your careers it might not work out yes things might change yes you're young definitely things are going to change whether it be in the dynamic of your relationship or location topography that kind of thing things might change yes but if you can find ways to work around it i don't see what the problem is whether you're young or old or whatever if the relationship you found a way to navigate around it and you've created your own story and your own journey i don't see how you cannot make it work from wherever you are in the world you know or in the country whichever it is whichever it is not in a bad way but I found out he's a sun warmer and my spirit has never been okay. Should I tell him? Absolutely. Absolutely. If you found out that someone has a calling or has been called to something and is a sun warmer, a healer, go back, whatever it is, and you are not okay with it and it doesn't sit correctly in your spirit, you have to tell them. They have to know how you feel about it, much like you have to know how they will respond to it in terms of how they feel about how you feel about them being a Sangom. So it's, it's one of those things with me and the calling that I have. It's something that I had to disclose to my partners. I cannot just sit and, and say nothing. And the next thing I have these dreams and I, I, I have a moment in my sleep where I'm shaking and all of that, certain things that happen to me. And then the person who's next to me is just like, what the, what the hell is this? You know what I'm saying? And give them the opportunity to decide whether they want to be with you or not. Much like he needs to know, or she, you found out he's a Sangoma. So he needs to know that how you feel about it so that he can decide whether it will work out for the two of you whether it won't work out for the two of you you can decide you can have a conversation about it you can sit down and see how you can work around it but it's not something that you can just keep to yourself and be like oh well he's a sangoma i hate it but i guess it is what it is no it is something that is a very big fundamental part of his journey and his life and it's not going anywhere and uh, you sitting there thinking that, oh, no, I need to tell him, I can't tell him, should I tell him, shouldn't I tell him, whatever, whatever. It's useless without having just the conversation with him. Like, sit down, be mature about it, have a conversation with him and say, listen, bro, um, this has been hard for me to take in. It's been hard for me to deal with and actually explain why. Why that is hard? Do you feel like you can't trust him now that he's a Sangoma, that he might see things about you, that he might... What is it about it that unsettles your spirit? And actually talk to him about it. But you can't not speak about how you feel about a certain thing that is a large part of someone else's life and your partner's life in this instance. I'm 21. Oh... Okay, 21. Okay, sis. I'm 21, looking for a relationship, but men want a quick romp, and that's not me. Am I the drama? Am I the drama? Are you the drama? Are you the drama? No, you're not the drama. You're 21, and you are not looking for a quick romp. You're looking for something more than that. And you do not need to hold yourself back about how you feel. You do not need to submit to the fact that, oh, well, the ones that you are finding, this is all they want, so I suppose this is what I'll get into. No, no, you don't. You don't have to get into anything. You don't have to lose your virginity if you're not ready. You don't have to just have a, a sexual romp with someone without it being a relationship. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do. So, no, you're not the drama. You just want someone you can connect with far beyond just being intimate with them and there is nothing and nothing wrong with that that's absolutely fine that's absolutely perfect you are entitled to wanting what you want especially if it's going to involve you your mind your heart and your body 
you're entitled to wanting what you want. So no, you're not the drama. They're not the drama. Just people want different things. And at 21, a lot of young people want to, you know, have fun. They want to have a good time without the attachment of, A, we're in a relationship. But if you want more than that, you are entitled to more than that. You deserve more than that. And you should have what you want. So be it. Catch me outside. How about that? Okay. Um, how do you let go? I've got a whole entire video on my channel about this. And I highly recommend that you check it out. I will see if I can link it here if i can't link it here i'll link it down below if i forget it does happen in the editing process where i forget okay and i apologize if i do because i remember somebody was mad at the roast the roast the creators video like you guys always say you'll link things and then you don't but honestly when you're editing it slips your mind you edit and then that's it da -da -da -da, and then you forget to link it when you upload the video so it really isn't our fault sometimes we remember sometimes we don't but um, I do have, just punch in the search button, just got there, letting go or how to let go or whatever it may be. And there'll be a video there for you to watch. That'll help. Um, do people still like book clubs or blogs? I want to start one and I'm not sure where to begin. Of course they do. There's a lot of people who still maintain good blogs that make money, book clubs that are great and have a great following and have uh, people who love to read. In fact, reading is picking up right now with the, with the just explosion of Bookstagram and BookTok and BookTube and all of that. Reading is actually picking up right now. So absolutely. And what should stop you from doing something that you want to do, irrespective of whether they are still in fashion or not, or whether they're still trending or whether people still like them or not. What matters is that you like them. So if you, if you want to start it, then start it. There's nothing that should stop you from doing that. You like it and that should be all that matters. Nothing else should matter. So if you want to start a book club, if you want to start a blog, do the absolute most. There are so many people that I follow who have blogs and who have book clubs, including myself. I have a book club. I did blog a blog before, back in the day. I don't do it anymore because my blog is essentially now my YouTube channel, right? It's a vlog slash blog. And I do have a book club as well. So... People do, do it because you want to do it, not because you're wondering how it will fare and if people are still interested in that kind of thing. Do it because you want to do it. Uh, Making a money quick, fast, to resign or not, beyond miserable, true state of the future of our country. Again, are you hearing this question? Like, I'm trying to understand what... what okay. Make a money quick, fast, full stop, to resign or not, dash, beyond miserable. I don't know... Okay. There's two different things. To resign or not, beyond miserable. You're miserable, yes, I understand that. But is it economically viable for you to resign right now without potentially maybe finding something else first before you decide to resign? Will it actually help you if you resign? Do you have a safe space or a, what do they call it? What do they call it? What do they call it? A cushion. Do you have a cushion for if you do resign that you'll still be okay? And if you don't, then I highly don't recommend that you resign. I do feel that you find something else in the meantime or you work on something else and try and find another stream of income. There are so many ways in which you can find other streams of income as opposed to just resigning and then sitting at home. Okay? And then make a money quick fast. I don't know how to make a money quick fast. I don't. Everything that I've done in my life has involved hard work, manual labor, and all of that kind of thing. So I don't know how to make a money quick fast. I really don't, and I can't advise on something I don't know how to do. I really can't. Um, so I'm a uni student, and I have two jobs. Also full-time. I work on my free times. Okay, got, got it. So you're a full-time uni student and you work on your free times with the two jobs. Advice on how to balance. Um, I've got multiple videos on this, on productivity, on time management. Um, I do, however, feel like you have a lot on your plate in terms of having two jobs and university. And if it's not necessary for you to have two, if you can just have one, maybe try doing that and not putting so much on your plate. Um... Uh, but if you have to have two and you don't have a choice, 
which is sadly sometimes the unfortunate part of life is that sometimes we have to do two jobs to you know keep the lights on but you're also a university student so for me i think just maybe pay attention to my time management um um, 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 videos and also just the mental health videos because it, it is a lot on your mental health for you to um, create a balance between all this work, school work and then still trying to live your life at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I really do think if you can change the, the way of things when it comes to this I highly recommend that you do that because it seems like it is a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, yeah. This lady says, one-sided relationships don't work. She says, advice on one-sided relationships, they don't work. It's really, <laughs> catch me outside. It's really that simple. One-sided relationships don't work. If you are friendships, I'm sorry, she said this. One-sided friendships, they don't work. If you are in a friendship where you feel like you're doing most of the work, you're bringing a lot to the table, you're trying to put, put your best foot forward, whereas the other person is just consistently negative, not doing enough work, um, um, not acknowledging their flaws, you're the one sitting here acknowledging your flaws, they're not acknowledging their flaws, then it's not going to work period point blank uh, friendships are much like any kind of other relationship uh, where it is a two-way street it's very much interpersonal and if you cannot be with a friend who understands that sometimes you're going to have quiffs okay sometimes you're going to have uh, difficulties and uh, disagreements and all of that but if they consistently want to see feel that they are right and you are wrong or don't want to own their truth or don't want to um, you know bring much attention to the friendship to try and fix what's been broken then it's pointless it's a one-sided friendship and how is that going to work for you except but be to your detriment at this point it's just going to be mentally draining on you and is it worth it at that point to be with someone who you can see is not giving off as much effort and 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 um, uh, um, you know love effort time energy into the into the friendship is it worth it no no uh, how do you and your partner how you and your partner opted to stay in separate houses and how that's beneficial for financial independence uh we didn't opt to stay in separate houses we already lived in separate houses when we got together from from then till now right um, and we're quite comfortable with that because we've established ourselves and our um, business, not business, our um, financial standing outside of each other. So all of these things, the properties and, and the jobs and, and the cars and all of this blah blah were created or founded outside of each other. So we just happen to be in a situation where, okay, you've got your place, I've got my place and let's figure it out. So we manage it in such a way that we interchange between our various places because no one has to sell their space. <laughs> I worked hard to have the space. You worked hard to have your space. You worked hard to da da da. We worked hard for what we have. So it becomes a situation where we're financially independent outside of each other and we are financially helpful to each other. We help each other quite a lot as well financially. So it's it it, it works. It works. It's one of those things that it's great when you're with somebody that you're together and you help each other out financially and whatever. It makes things a little... It takes the load off you a lot um, sometimes because unexpected expenses and things like that takes a, lot, uh, a load off them sometimes for the same thing. Um, but it's, it's great because you have your own financial independence. And when you eventually decide to come together, it becomes a situation where you have a chat on, okay, we've got our respective places, but we can rent those out and then buy our own forever home. Because at this point, if we're moving in together, we're moving in together to a forever home. So in terms of financial independence, it's really just, it's been on the up and up, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't, the relationship doesn't necessarily affect you negatively in terms of financial independence. On a path to finding myself at 20, what to not feel guilty about during the selfish about me season? Choosing you. 
There's nothing you need to feel guilty about, especially in a season where you're choosing yourself. You're choosing yourself. So at this point, nothing about that should make you feel guilty. Nothing. If you don't want to be around friends because you want to work on yourself or you want to you wanna do yoga, you want to read or you want to spend time by yourself, you want to spend time with your family, sure. You don't have to explain the decisions that you make to anybody. What not to do? No. Absolutely not. You do whatever it is that you want to do. All within reason. Be respectful while you do that. Don't be um, irritable, angry, or nonchalant, um, 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 arrogant, ignorant about it. Just do you without negatively impacting the other person or negatively impacting the next person. Um, and that's, that's all that matters. If you can do that, then what is the problem? It's your season. It's your time to work on you. So... What is the problem, my darling? Um, how to deal with friendship breakups in Diagoa. Friendship breakups are not easy. In fact, sometimes I feel like friendship breakups are harder than relationship breakups because um, that person knows you more than, you know, your partner knows you in most times. Um, so those are very, very difficult and not easy to maneuver around. But I think it's, it's an issue of just being... I have a, a, a relationship on a relationship a video on how to move forward from uh, relationship breakups and I think that would apply to friendships as well P definitely do check it out I feel like you know I've got all this content on lock for you guys they eh? all you need to do is just punch in just got tail relationship breakups then you'll see it it'll pop up um, but um, I think just being easy on yourself because it's not it's not easy to lose someone you care that much about it changes the dynamic of your daily life even because especially if you talk to that person every single day it really changes everything um, and that's not easy that's not easy to consume that's not easy to 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 make peace with uh, but you have to kind of um, allow it to process and happen through you and experience all of the feelings and the emotions that come with it but it's not a bad thing um, and sometimes you did it, it maybe you did it for your own peace of mind and for your own good it doesn't necessarily mean it still doesn't hurt but maybe you just moved away from it a little bit so that you can heal from whatever you may have been going through uh, mentally and emotionally and that's okay um, you just need to make that decision for yourself and if you can do that, then you're well on your way. It's just going to take time. It's going to take time. It will. Dating advice. My husband passed away and I want to date. I just don't know how to get back into it after almost 14 years. Sure. 14 years of not dating. And let's be honest, dating is not easy. I've talked about dating a lot on this channel. I've talked about how just, uh, just horrendous and time consuming it can be and how just annoying it can be to get to meet new people and some of them are just so impossible and all of this but i think it's just putting one foot in front of the other i think it's just um knowing that you have taken the time after your husband's passing that uh you took time to yourself and you worked on yourself and you worked on your family and you focused on your family but everyone deserves love and everyone deserves to move forward and everyone deserves another chance at being happy and finding someone who is for them and finding their special person and the only way you can do it with dating is literally to just throw yourself in there it's literally like throwing yourself into the deep end it really is there's no baby steps into dating you just you just get into it you either try it via online dating or you go out more with your friends and maybe they introduce you to other people if you've got great friends great friends will do that for you they'll introduce you to other people and uh, you'll get to meet people that way but you just have to just take it upon yourself to be more out there and choose yourself and choose your lo your life and love and happiness um, especially in intimately right so you just have to throw yourself in there I can't really give you any other advice outside of it is literally just throwing yourself in the deep end but you know having your friends and family 
being supportive in that journey for you makes it a lot easier as well that's pretty much it for uh, advice with cat if you enjoyed the video please like the video please subscribe and join the family i also do have a membership space where we talk about mental health where we have um um you know just me days me time whatever we've got great videos there fun videos there as well so if you want to see those definitely do join the membership space uh, and that's called the space with cat there is a join button just below what you are watching right now right next to my name there is should be a join button there and you click join and you follow the prompts and that is pretty much it so lastly again always thank you for choosing me over and over again and i'll see you in the next video until then sayonara